in the holy heck is going on with this build? Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up, we put them back together, and we massively increase your performance. We've got a build with family drama that's horribly thermally throttling. Are we going to be able to save it? We've got a $700 small form factor build, but it's not performing the way it should. We've got a build with an SSD setup from 2010. Are we going to be able to bring it back to the future, or is it stuck in the past? Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click. Click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content with that let's jump into it so we're actually suspending our sponsor spot for this video so we can make an appeal to you to support world central kitchen in their response to the horrible earthquakes in syria and turkey world central kitchen is a great nonprofit. they help feed people on the ground in their time of need we've made a donation i'd ask you to consider doing the same and we greatly appreciate any support you can give Thank you so much. All right, let's jump into Scar Lettuce. He says a friend is looking to build a system to play Overwatch, Dead by Daylight, Xbox, Game Pass games at 120 FPS, so you like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Minecraft, that kind of stuff, 1080p. That's actually pretty easy to do. His cousin helped him pick out the parts and you're kind of jealous he didn't ask you. I see at the bottom here you say, I try to put in my two cents to improve it, but his cousin doesn't want to hear it. Maybe your vid can change his mind. Okay, well, quick timeout. We don't want to get involved in some kind of family drama. Remember, it's their money. You can offer advice in a very friendly way, but if they don't want to take it, they don't want to take it, and that should just be okay. His total budget is $1,250. Let's see what they've got. What in the holy heck is going on with this build? I can see that most of this build would actually work, but they've made one huge and critical error, and if you can spot it, hit pause, type it down in the comments. Let's jump into that error, which is they selected the i5-13600K. Why is that error? Oh my gosh, Jason, this is a great CPU. Only $320. Not bad for this budget level, although I'd like to go up maybe $1,500 before I start thinking about a CPU like this. What's wrong? Well, the CPU is great. The problem is not the CPU. The problem is everything else that goes with the CPU. These are terrible combos. So let's start off with the GPU, for instance. We only got an RX 6650XT. This is not a GPU that I would pair with a 13600K. This is a great GPU, don't get me wrong, but this is like, get an i3-12100 or a Ryzen 5600 or an i5-12400, get a much cheaper CPU and you probably get this up to like a 6700 XT by trading out that budget. For the cooler, I, I, I had to actually suspend this compatibility filter in PC Part Picker in order to put this in here. That's why you couldn't get in here. And yeah, that's because it's totally insufficient. First of all, I don't think this fits LGA 1700. I might be wrong on that. They may just have failed to update PC Part Picker. It's not like this is a cooler that I keep a lot track of but you see it a lot in pre-built pcs so that's where i often see it and look it's basically a good replacement if you want some rgb uh, for the race stealth they included amd cooler but not for 13600k that thing draws huge amounts of power i mean this thing is going to completely thermal throttle it in milliseconds in milliseconds and then the board we got with it is i, I just whoa no 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 definitely not i mean look at that board do you see any vrm heat sinks no there's no there's no heat sinks on these vrm this board is going to immediately thermally throttle. This board is not appropriate for an i5-13600K. We can get a Z690 motherboard with BIOS flashback, which you do need for a 13600K, for about $140 to $150, which would have all the features that we want, rather than this really cut-rate B660 that I wouldn't recommend for any CPU. Oh, the RAM. I, I have no problem with this RAM. In fact, uh, it's getting cheaper and cheaper. $67, you can almost get 32 gigs now for about $80. But if you want the RGB, the RGB does cost about another $10 or $15. So I don't mind spending 10 or $15 on a little bit of aesthetics. And DDR4 3200CL16, perfectly fine. For a 13600K, if we wanted to make that work, I'd see if we could sneak up to 3600CL16, but I wouldn't do it at the cost of the graphics card or the processor. The drive, Samsung 981 terabyte. Look, the problem with this drive is it's really not appropriate for kind of this range of gaming PCs. If you want to put it in, fine. But you can get a budget NVMe PCIe Gen 3 drive that's super fast anyway for half the money, literally half the money. You can get it for $50, $48, $49 right now. And you could have gotten two terabytes for the same the same price as this. This case is just no longer sold. This is not even the mesh version of the case. So I hope this is probably just you selecting it. If they do go with a 
P400, maybe it's a used one or something. Hopefully it's the mesh version because this will need some serious airflow seeing as we're already gonna thermally throttle the heck out of the 13600K. PSU is a little undersized to me. And honestly, if you're gonna go with a higher end component like a 13600K, this is a C tier rated component on the PSU cultist list. I would look to at least get to the B tier. So overall for $971, we didn't even spend all our money. Of course, we're missing a price for the case in there. So probably kind of comes out. I just feel like we're left so much performance on the table. We could be doing much better or we could be cutting the build back if all we want to do is 1080p 120 fps and saving a lot of money to buy more games i call this the 1250 dollars max fps 1440p gaming pc why because we're gonna get max fps at 1440p jason he might not have a 1440p monitor well guess what for 1250 dollars you can get one and we threw one in here it's the hp x27q this is 209 dollars it's a great entry level 1440p gaming monitor yes you can definitely get better 1440p game monitors, but for $209, this is an absolute insane value. And it's been on this kind of super sale for several months now. And we paired that with the ASRock Phantom Gaming Radeon RX 6800 for $479 right now at Newegg. There's actually several of these that have come back into stock uh, since the holidays have been over. And they're all around that $480 to $500 price point. Still a pretty good price point to pick things up. Yes, we do expect AMD and Nvidia to eventually sometime in the near future, hopefully introduce graphics cards, maybe around this price point, I wouldn't hold my breath just yet. This is probably still gonna be the deal for quite some time. And it's gonna give you huge amounts of frames at 1440p in all those titles that you wanna play. I went with the Ryzen 5 5600. If I had a little bit more money, I might've snuck up to a 5700X. That being said, for $140, this CPU is an absolute beast. Right now, if you do wanna go Intel, the i5-12400, not that much more expensive. Both of them do come with an included box cooler. I do like the Ryzen CPUs better better simply because they have better motherboard selection. Speaking of the motherboard, we went with the Asus Tough Gaming B550 Pro for just $150 right now over at Newegg. This is an incredible motherboard. It does come with BIOS flashback, which I think you still probably do need for the Ryzen 5600. Comes with a ton of rear panel USB connectivity, comes with improved audio on it. Overall, just absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal motherboard. For the RAM, we actually went with a two by eight gigabyte DDR4 3600 CL16 kit. This is gonna be much faster. now. Do you really need this at 1440p? Probably not. You could definitely go with a cheaper kit if you wanted to save a little bit of money, if you need mice and keyboard or something like that. But the price difference is so small right now, I decided to just kind of reach up and grab that memory. For the storage, we just went with the cheapest NVMe PCIe Gen 3 drive, which right now is a Silicon Power A6. I know people are tired of me recommending this drive. It always just happens to be like a dollar two cheaper, but like the MP33 is a good one. There's a number of good drives out there. Check out our best SSD for gaming video. We go through a number of them. So I went with the Deepcool CK5 560. I really, 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 really did like building in this case. We built our 5800X3D build in here. So I know it's got plenty of room. It's got plenty of airflow. It's great if you ever want to add liquid cooling to it. And I love that it comes with this fan, even though it's got three ARGB fans up front, it comes with this fan back here. A lot of cases don't come with any fan. So you're forced to buy one. At least this way you have the option of buying an RGB fan and replacing it, or you could just go with what's included for $89. For the PSU, we went with the Asus Tough Gaming. This is a B tier rated PSU. It's got really nice sleeve cables with it. 750 watt, 80 plus bronze. Now this was $779 right now. It's a little bit more expensive than what you were looking to buy, but we definitely need a little bit more watch, especially now that we've upgraded that graphics card, even though we have downgraded the CPU. So for $1,250-ish, including a gaming monitor, you're going to get a 1440p gaming system. I really hope your friend and your cousin can take a hard look at this and kind of accept, hey, maybe there's a better way to do this out there. PC parts is hard. It's everything's always shifting. I hopefully they can take some advice and get a much better system. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Okay, we've got my player 8546 US and this is their first time building a gaming PC. They want to use an Nvidia graphics card and an Intel CPU. Well, we'll check out whether or not we're going to use Nvidia because your budget is 500 to $700 and they mostly want to play games at 1080p at ultra or high setting. They're mostly newer titles and some older ones. They chose a case with lots of airflow to keep their components cool. Okay, let's see what you got. Okay, we, we got some wacky, wacky, wacky stuff going on here. That being said, this is not a terrible start to what you got so far. Just I think we've got a little confusion on how to build the best kind of gaming PC. So I actually think we start off pretty well here. We start off with the i3-12100F. This is a very capable four core, eight 
thread CPU. Intel comes with an included box cooler. So it's kind of all there together for just $106, something we constantly recommend for ultra budget builds. Could also look at the Ryzen 5500 here. We go a little bit off the rails, though not terribly with this ASRock H610 micro ATX motherboard. I just don't like motherboards, especially for things like this, where they have no VRM heat sink. I just feel like for almost $100 for this H610 boards, we probably could have gotten a B660 instead. Let's jump into the graphics card. And listen, if you absolutely have to have NVIDIA, the RTX 3050 is actually not even the best value. The RTX 3050 is slower than the RTX 2060 for the same price right now. I think you can find a 2060 for about $280, just like you've got here with the RTX 3050. The 2060 is considerably faster, considerably faster. The 3050 is a big ripoff. You know, AMD just has way, way better value at this part of the budget kind of tier of GPUs. That's just a fact. So if you want to get super high details, I don't know if the 3050 is going to do it. It really just gives us the same performance level as a GTX 1660 Super or TI. You can pick up one of those for 229 new, or you can pick them up for as low as about $120 used. I like the RAM, a DDR4 3200CL16, got a relatively cheap kit for $42, so great job there. Obviously, we're going with the included box cooler because we haven't included one, but the storage, man, can we talk about your storage? And just like, I want people to stop doing this crazy, crazy craziness. Here's what we've got. We've got like, I feel like we're back in 2010. 120 gigabyte A400 Kingston SATA SSD, two and a half inch SATA SSD for admittedly six $16 it seems super cheap, but you can get an NVMe SSD a 500 gig one for about $30, maybe $28 now. SSD prices have absolutely cratered. And I, I get what you were trying to do. You were trying to do what we used to do back in the old days when solid state drives cost so much money. You'd get a Windows boot drive of 120 gigabytes, and then you'd go and run everything off of a hard drive, and you've got the Seagate Barracuda, blah, 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 for $50. This two terabyte hard drive right here, you could have gotten a terabyte of SSD space. And then if you add in the 15 or 16 bucks you spent on the other drive as well, we could have almost gotten two terabytes of space for about the same price. Uh, the case, uh, the Asus Prime AP20, and this is a micro ATX case, it's not a mini ITX case, though obviously you can use mini ITX motherboards in as well. A lot of people do like this case, you know, especially for small form factor advocates. That being said, you're getting this for $80, and $80 is not a bad price, but at your price point, like every 20 or 30 bucks extra is money that we could have used somewhere else. And the problem with this case is it only comes with one included fan. You need more fans to make this case work. Gonna add another another probably 10 or $15 to the overall cost of the build. Power supply, you just plugged in $45 here for this Thermal Take Smart. Uh, yeah, it looks like that's what it's going for right now. It's a C tier rated PSU. Honestly, nothing wrong with this PSU. It's one I would probably pick at this budget level if it was the cheapest one. So for $715, you actually came in $15 over your budget limit. You know, we're getting a PC with not the best performance right now. I feel like we're so focused on name brand and you can do that when you have money to spend, but we don't really have the money to spend. I feel like we left a lot of performance on the table and we've got this crazy drive situation that we've got to get sorted out. I call this a $678 1440p or high FPS 1080 PC gaming PC. Why? Because we are going to be able to play games at super high ultra detail kind of settings at 1080p or if you want, get into 1440p, more like 60 FPS or higher, depending on the title. And we did so for less money than you were looking to spend. So $678, we actually came in under your hard cap budget. How did we do that? Well, let's first start off with the GPU. Remember, building a gaming PC, you want to get the biggest GPU you can and just get a CPU that's not going to bottleneck it. And right now, for $260, that GPU is the MSI Mech Radeon RX 6650 XT. This absolutely nukes that poor little 3050 off the planet. There's really no reason to get NVIDIA at this level of budget. The 3050 is not going to ray trace for anything. None of these GPUs are going to ray trace for anything. Just completely get that off the table. So then what do you really have? DLSS versus FSR. Uh, essentially, it's a wash at these resolutions. You're not really going to use them at 1080p anyway, possibly at 1440p a little bit, but they're essentially equal. So overall, there's no reason not to get something that's going to give you tremendously more performance. We're talking like 30, 40% more performance that poor little 3050. Now, alternatively, you could go with the 2060 here, which is something we talked about, and you can do that for about $30 more for about $280 instead, if you absolutely have to have NVIDIA. Well, we stuck it out with the i3-12100F. I think it's a very appropriate processor for this level of budget. Could look at the 13100F, but honestly, you're not gonna get any additional frames out of it, really. It's just a small bump in frequency over the 12100F, and I'm not really willing to pay the price premium for that for no real performance. We did get rid of your kind of nasty motherboard that had no 
OVRM heat sinks. We went with the ASRock B660M Phantom Gaming 4. You could also look at the, I think the Gigabyte B760 DS3H is now out. There's a couple of boards here any of which would be good. We're just looking for solid VRM heat sinks, decent rear IO panel. These are all gonna be entry level boards, so I'm not gonna make them sound like the greatest things since sliced bread, but I just like to see at least some heat dissipation on those VRMs. That way we're not really gonna cook this build. We stuck it out with your RAM, DDR4, 3200, CL16, very appropriate, but we've straightened out that mess of a hard drive and tiny little SSD boot drive situation. And we just went with the team group MP33, one terabyte PCIe Gen 3 NVMe SSD. Now on Honestly, we could have probably gotten two terabytes here if we wanted to spend a little bit more money. Start with one terabyte. I think you're gonna find that one terabyte's actually gonna do pretty well for you. And if you need more, this, this board actually has a second NVMe slot and you are gonna thank me for not using a hard drive for the case. I know you really like that case. And if you wanna spend the extra money and get that case, go ahead. That being said, I just happen to see that the Thermaltake V150 is on sale right now. It actually comes with three included ARGB fans. It's a micro ATX case, it's relatively small. It's got these two included fans. It's got one in the rear. This actually does not come with a second fan, just FYI or a fourth fan, I should say. This is what the configuration looks like right there. Really nice. It's got that kind of swinging door to it. It's got great airflow. I think you would really, really love this and you'd love the RGB with it too. If you don't like RGB, you can always turn it off. But right now for $59, it's an insane value and I would definitely take a look at it. Uh, for the power supply, you happen to pick out the best deal right now. 550 watts is more than enough for this build. So for six. $678, we've given you a build that's gonna be able to play games at 1440p or just go massive ultra details at 1080p, super high FPS, plenty of storage. We completely fixed that situation. And I think we've got you a really slick looking case with some awesome RGB that you're really gonna like. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Okay, we got Mr. Blissful, I love the name. Hey Jason, this is their first build. Their goal for this PC is to be able to play triple A titles, 1440p, maybe 4K, and they wanna get high frame rates. They also wanna do some music production and possible VR gameplay. Good news is gaming PCs tend to be good at this stuff. Their budget is around $1,500, but they don't mind going over just a little bit. They made this list by watching a ton of our videos. Hope they did okay. Well, let's see how you did, I'm excited. Okay, I mean, we've got some challenges here. I, we, we said we wanted possible 4K and I'm not seeing 4K in front of us. I'm seeing maybe 1440p, kind of higher refresh rate gaming, definitely on the table still. But I can see we've got this huge, huge, huge kind of like design virus going on, right? It's the Corsair virus in your case. So you've got the Corsair, all white, everything. It's gonna be super expensive and that definitely gonna limit our performance because we're spending it on appearance and we're spending it on name brand. Now, if that's okay for you, maybe continue to go this route because as I look at the build, it will work perfectly. It's just that for $1,411, only walking away with the RTX 3060 Ti feels kind of, oh, it feels kind of awful. I'll be honest with you. You can buy a pre-built right now with these same specs for about $999 all white. I think it's the Shiva 2, Skytech has it. Again, $999 will get you the same performance as this PC. And that kind of makes me a little bit on the sad side. Now it doesn't have maybe all the RGB yours does, but come on we got to be able to do better than that for almost $1,500. And I would definitely look for a much faster GPU than the 3060 Ti. This is more like a thousand-ish dollar build. You're like leagues above that right now. We went with the Ryzen 5 5600X. I don't mind the CPU. I think we've, you know, probably could come down to the 5600. Honestly, for the 3060 Ti, you could come down for the, to the 12100 as well. Could look at Intel 12400. I just don't like the motherboard pricing right now. It's kind of sky high for some reason. But here's where we start getting into the Corsair virus in this case, right? A 240 millimeter all in one liquid cooler, amazing RGB. Look, this is a great cooler, but it's $160, man, $160. The included box cooler on that 5600X would be absolutely adequate. You could get a budget tower air cooler for $30. You can get white ones for $40 that have two towers to them. It's just like, we could do a lot of other things and we're spending a lot of money. I don't mind the motherboard, it rocks tricks B550A right now on for $152. It's great price. It's got super upgraded audio on it. I really do like this board. The only thing it really lacks is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it, but you can always get an add-in card or you can get a, a USB plug-in card for that as well. Really, really good value right now. We went with a kind of more premium kit, DDR4, 3200, CL16. 
probably fine for this GPU level, well, especially at 1440p and at 4K, where the CPU becomes less and less of an issue and you become more and more GPU bound. The memory speed matters less and less. You just want to make sure to clear that threshold, and the threshold is DDR4 3200 CL16 for a Ryzen 5600X. Drive, for whatever reason, this drive is normally one of the ones I recommend for the budget drives. It's about $20 to $30 more expensive than all the other similar budget NVMEs, so I'd take a look at one of those instead. One big problem here, we wanted the Corsair 5000D airflow case. There is a 4000D for a lot cheaper, and both of them, the big problem is they only come with two included fans. They come with one fan in the front, one fan in the rear. They're not RGB fans. $147, by the way. Corsair fans are also very expensive, and once you get a Corsair RGB, you get locked into their kind of proprietary RGB environment, which I'm not a big fan of. I really do like the three pin headers instead. $150 for this, it's you're right on the edge of this being okay, but I just feel like with the GPU we got, spending this much on the case feels kind of bad. And I don't quite understand what's going on with this power supply. Now it's out of stock everywhere. I even searched Newegg, Amazon for it. You have manually put in a price of $159. This is the all white Asus Strix. Now the only thing I can tell that this has that other all white power supplies don't have is the actual plastic on the connector is all white itself. We can get a, a pair of cable extensions that have those white connectors as well for about $30 or so. And we can find a an adequate power supply. 850 is way more than we need for this system for a lot less. And so I just think we're massively overspending. And that being said, I can't even find this thing in stock anywhere. So for $1,400 and $11, you know, I just feel like the performance is massively lacking. We could have bought a pre-built for $999. So I feel like where did our extra money go? If we're going to go build our own gaming PC, it should have a lot of extra features that you can't get from a pre-built and it should be cheaper as well. I call this the $1,500 white themed monster gaming 4K PC. Why? Because you are going to be able to play games at 4K, high refresh rate, 1440p, super high refresh rate if you want. And it's going to have that all white killer aesthetic that you're looking for. We spent $1,500. $17, so I came in 17 bucks over. Go find 17 bucks because this is going to be amazing. Now, there are some places you could cut costs if that 17 bucks for some reason is a, an absolute deal breaker. Let's start off with the GPU because this is what's driving it. We got you a 4070 Ti, the Gigabyte Gaming OC one. It's an amazing card. Look, I know the reviewers panned it in terms of the price to performance, but if you look at the market out there, there are no 3090s out there unless you want to go use. There are no 3080s out there unless you want to go use. So it doesn't really have a lot of competition. And I was considering a 7900 XT on the AMD side, just hundred bucks more would really kind of break your budget. So this is the biggest, baddest GPU I could fit in. It's just what the market offers right now. You can have that argument whether or not in terms of the generational uplift, it makes sense or it's fair than video raised prices. That's neither here nor there. You want a gaming PC. And to me, this is probably the most appropriate GPU out there for you. And it's gonna give you the performance you want. So in order to afford that GPU, we just kind of shaved off costs here and there. The first thing I did is I went from the 5600 X to the 5600. Yeah, it's only like $20, $30 here and there, but $20, $30 here and there gets us to that 4070 Ti and essentially the same performance as the Ryzen 5600X. I went with a white RGB cooler instead of that stupidly expensive all-in-one liquid cooler. Instead, you could go with the included box cooler, swap that out for the AIO later in life. I threw in the Thermal Ride Assassin King. Why? Because, you know, there's so many of these coolers. There's a Vetri V5, there's the id Cooling SE214XT. Any of them would be absolutely fine, but this is the aesthetic you're looking for, I think. It's gonna make this build look really nice. It's gonna make it much quieter and you're gonna get great thermals from it. We stuck it out with your board because it's honestly an amazing motherboard for $150. So grab that board right now before it goes out of stock. We also stuck it out with your memory. I could have saved four or $5 going with like a team group set, but if you like Corsair, spend four or five bucks, absolutely fine here. 3200 CL16 at 4K is gonna be fine for us. Might have gone 3600 CL16 if we could. That being said, most of those white RGB kits are completely sold out or that are stupidly priced right now. So this is definitely the way to go. For the storage, we just chopped down the storage to the kind of current budget king, which is Silicon Power A60 for $99 instead of, you know, whatever that was, $120 or $130 you were looking at. So just chopping off some price. For the case, we went with a Fractal Design Pop Air. I really like this case, only $100, comes with three included ARGB fans, really kind of everything I think you're looking for, especially for a first time builder. I think this is gonna be kind of everything that you really need of a gaming PC. 
And listen, it looks sweet too. Finally, for the power supply, what I did is I combined a really good value power supply, which is Asus Tough Gaming, 750 watt, 80 plus bronze. People say, oh, it's bronze. Shouldn't you get a gold one? It's not about bronze or gold. It's about where it is on the PSU cultist list. This is a B tier rated unit. It's better than many gold rated units. And what I did is I went out and got a cable extension kit that actually has the white plastic connectors. That's an Antec power supply extension kit. And they're only $33 right now for the full set. So for $1,517, we're going to get you an amazing gaming PC. It's going to play 4K or 1440p insane frame rates. And it's going to give you that white ARGB aesthetic. We're going AM4. You can always upgrade this in the future to a 5800X 3D if you want as well. Overall, this is going to give you amazing 4K gaming performance. And I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of new content, did you check out our How to Build a Gaming PC 2023 guide? It's right here. We go through step-by-step -step everything you need to build an amazing gaming PC in 2023, whether it's AMD or Intel. Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.